welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. First thing I want to do before I get to the bulk of this episode is I have over 200 fur balls to open. So, let's see what's inside. There we go. Alright, <laughs> let's see what we've got. Hides, sticks, clay, feathers. The usual. Did we not get a single name tag? We didn't get a single name tag. In over 200 fur balls. That's really bad luck, I think. Alright, so what I want to get to this episode is trying to start overhauling the storage system that we have. So this is going to be the third iteration. We're probably going to end up with four iterations at uh, by the time we reach endgame. The last one being when we get into Applied Energistics 2. Which allows you to basically digitally store your items in a disk drive. And allows you to do all sorts of autographing and just really, really cool stuff. But we're definitely not there yet. I've looked, we're not anywhere close to being able to do AE2. So before that, I think the next best thing, the third stage, the first stage being when we just put everything in chests, the second stage being what we have now, the third stage is going to be making it so that everything is um, essentially stored pretty much the way it is now, but we can access it all from a central place. Because right now I have to go to individual things to access whatever I want. I have to look around in a bunch of chests, I have to look for the right item amongst the drawers. And it's just hard to tell whether I have something. Now that I have so much stuff, it's kind of hard to manage it all. So what I'm going to get is the inventory panel from Ender.io. This thing isn't amazing, but it's decent. Amazing being, of course, AE2. But it's decent and it works. So just looking at what we need. Uh, we need more than just the inventory panel itself, by the way. We need the inventory panel, plus we're going to need item conduits from Ender.io, plus we're going to need a bunch of remote awareness upgrades. Uh, we'll get into how all that stuff works together. But uh, one of the things I'm going to need to make all this stuff is I'm going to need quite a few eyes of Ender, which can be made one of two ways, either with an Ender Pearl combined with Blaze Powder. And I don't have much Blaze Powder, so I don't really want to do it this way. The other way, much easier, is to do Starlight Infusion. And that just takes an Ender Pearl and turns it into an Eye of Ender. So I figure that'll be, well, a lot more straightforward, a lot easier for me to do, and I'm already decently into Astral Sorcery, so it shouldn't be that big of a problem. So, thing is though, I do need to make a Starlight Infuser, and to make that, I need the Celestial Altar, which is the third tier of Altar. Right now we have the second tier. So, let's upgrade this thing. This should be the stuff needed, yeah, you can see the picture here. This is the stuff needed to upgrade it. Some Stardust, Star Metal, Aquamarine, some Marble, and a Rock Crystal. There we go. Oh, looks like it opened up a new part in the book, too. Cool. So that's the final tier. However, I can't use it yet because, just like the last one was a big multi-block structure, this one is also a multi-block structure. And it's, I think it's pretty much the same as this, just a little bit bigger. So this right now is, what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So right now it's like a 9 by 9. And... Oh, I lost it. Or is it? Attunement? I think it's attunement. Yeah, there it is. And the new one is an 11 by 11. So same basic design, but just a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the size. And complete. Check it out. Still fits, too. Only got a little bit bigger. I think it grew by one on each dimension. Alright, let me get the recipe together for the... What was it? The Starlight tra uh, Transmutation? What the heck was it called? Starlight Infusion. Or Starlight Infuser. Yeah, let me get this ready. Alright, I got everything together. I did run into a problem though, although I just fixed it. The problem is that after getting everything together, I didn't quite get enough starlight being collected, even at the peak of night, to be able to make the starlight infuser. So I moved it up. I ran out of blocks there. Uh, yeah, I moved the whole thing up because the higher the Y level, the more starlight I can collect. And now it's fine. Let's make it. There 
There we go. Such cool effects. Oh no, the sound effect got stuck on. I thought that was fixed. Ah, uh, oh well. Alright, so now I have the infuser, but I have no doubt that it has its own multi-block structure to go with it, which I have not taken a look at, so let me find it. Okay, I changed my mind. The starlight infuser is not a good way to do this. Gotcha. So the problem with the starlight infuser is, uh, I mean, not so much the multi-block structure that much. This isn't too hard to make. However, it requires all these buckets of starlight. And to make all those buckets of starlight, I would have to use tons of prismarine, and I have very little prismarine left, and it's kind of hard to find, and I don't know. There's probably a way to generate prismarine, but that's a little bit too much, because this thing can evidently only infuse one ender eye at a time. And there's a chance that it will, it will suck up one of the buckets when you infuse an ender eye, so I might have to, like, you know, do one at a time and then replace some buckets full of starlight. And uh, it just seems like a hassle. I'm pretty sure getting blaze powder would be way, way faster. So, let's go hunting. I've already got luck 2 on my sword, which means you get better drops from mobs. Let's go ahead and put luck 3 on it, since I've got one modifier left. Oh, looks like I actually need more. Whoop. There we go. Let's see. So, <laughs> yeah, I got three zombie fleshes from one zombie. Alright, let me go try to find some blazes. Okay, I managed to get 20 blaze rods, and I believe put in the pulverizer, each of these will make four blaze powder. There we go, got everything together for the inventory panel. Actually, it wasn't too bad at all. There's some kind of odd stuff here. Actually, most of this I've never made before, but it's actually all pretty easy. Ender Pulsar, just Eyes of Ender, Obsidian. Um, this thing is just Obsidian and Quartz. These magic walls are just stone and a couple of Intium dust. Like, it's all pretty cheap. And this thing is just a diamond and some pulsating iron nuggets. Yeah, so there we go. All done, right? Just plop that there and there we go. Have a whole craft ex- no, just kidding. We're not even close to done. <laughs> So, this thing actually, unlike most things, does not run on power exactly. I mean, at least what power is it is not some sort of electricity, it's not RF or EU or anything like that. It actually runs on nutrients. Which is disgusting. Basically, you need to make a thing called the vat. Which has a actually really easy recipe, so that's not going to be hard to make, but uh, you need to make the vat and then that thing takes power and it'll process... Um, the easiest thing to process, I think, is going to be a mixture of zombie flesh and sugar. And that will coalesce into nutrient distillation. It's disgusting. This thing basically runs on zombie juice. So, yeah, let me get that made. Okay, I've got the vat made. This isn't where it's going to go permanently by any means, I just want to demonstrate how it works. So it's connected to power, and you can put different things in here. Some things are more efficient than others, but um, assuming that it's the same in this mod pack as it was in the last one I played, the easiest and most kind of easily to get, easy to get and renewable things would be rotten flesh and sugar. I mean, the sugar is coming from the sugar cane and the uh, farm that I have, and rotten flesh obviously from the mob farm. So if I throw these in, it should... Hmm, it might need water. Yeah, there we go. I just put it next to here, so it just gets some water automatically. And it's just running on the power it already has stored inside of it. And turns it into nasty, nasty nutrient distillation. Thankfully, I can't smell it. Well, I'm just going to leave this running for a while. The inventory panel really does not use up very much nutrient distillation. So it's going to be fine to run it on just a couple buckets full that I manually put in. Just for a little bit until I kind of get everything situated and figure out where it's supposed to be. Alright, now we run into kind of a bigger problem. I need probably a couple stacks of Ender IO conduits. 
And if we take a look at that, um, item conduits specifically. So pulsating iron nugget, no problem, but the conduit binder is actually a bit of a problem. For that we need the binder composite. And for the binder composite... Okay, you can see there's two ways to make it. The bottom way sucks, the top way is good, but requires us to make new machines. So this way, <laughs> this recipe makes one, this recipe makes eight. Oh, this, wait, 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 this has to be oxidized ferric sand? I just thought this was just any kind of sand. This is from four iron dust and sand and sulfur just to make one of that? Never mind, that's terrible. Yeah, that's not happening. Okay, this is definitely the way I want to go. It just uses coal powder, clay, some sand, and an HTPE pellet. That's the hard part. And it makes eight binder composite. And each binder composite makes... Um, what is it called? Conduit binder. So each binder composite makes two conduit binders. So just by making this recipe once, this will make 16 conduit binders. So a, lot, a little goes a long way. But what about this HDPE pellet? And that is a whole load of other mechanism machines. I don't even know what I need to make exactly. I know I definitely need to make the pressurized reaction chamber, obviously. That takes a substrate and turns it into the pellet. It takes oxygen and liquid ethylene. Okay, the oxygen I'm, uh, I'm already making with the whatever converter thing that makes oxygen and hydrogen from water. But the liquid ethylene, I don't know where that comes from. I guess rotary condensator? Which takes ethylene and makes it into liquid ethylene? But then where does ethylene come from? When I click that, nothing even happens. So I don't know. <laughs> There's definitely quite a few machines I need to make to get this to work. So let me figure it out. Okay, I think I'm ready to get started. So this is going to be a little bit messy. Uh, because I'm actually going to reuse one of these machines... Three times? I'm, so I'm going to use the pressurized reaction chamber to make the substrate itself... And the ethylene? Yeah. So I'm going to use it to make the substrate and the ethylene. And then I'm going to pump the ethylene into the condensator to make it into liquid ethylene. Then I'm going to pump it back into this thing with oxygen to make the HDPE pellet. So it's <laughs> there's going to be a lot of reuse. I'm going to have to store a lot of things in barrels. But um, thankfully, one of the things I had to make when I was making the two machines, the rotary condensator and the other one, I guess I... Oh, I put it down, right? Uh, while I was making those, I had to make some large drums. Some reinforced large drums. I don't know how much these hold, but I'm assuming a pretty large amount, so I think I'm going to use these to hold a lot of the fluids. I also had to make a biofuel. This is used both for the ethylene, I believe, and also to make the substrate. We need two biofuel. And for biofuel, you can basically put, like, most natural things. I, I used leaves into the macerator. And then that produced biochaff, and then putting the biochaff back in the macerator produces the biofuel. So, let's go try it all out. We've also got some speed upgrades and stuff, so... Hopefully we can make this stuff pretty fast. So, at the moment, I want to produce the... Substrate? Yeah. So I'm going to produce the substrate. I've got the water coming in here. Just piped it over. Again, it's all ugly because I'm just kind of temporarily doing this and then I'm going to tear it down. Now we need the hydrogen. And to speed things up, I went ahead and made advanced pressurized tubes. Just upgraded from the basic ones so that they move stuff a bit faster. Now, which side is the hydrogen? Not that side. Okay, there's the hydrogen, but it's not going to go into it until I configure it. So this is the red. So this is the right side, and we want this to be red. Oh, there's a separate tab for gases. Yeah, there's a tab for configuring the sides for items, energy, fluids, and gases. So I missed it over here. That should do it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so if we add in the biofuel, that should make what we want it to make. Let's also toss in... Uh, how much power does this use? <laughs> I 
<laughs> he uses two RF per tick. That's so cute. Okay, let's give it four. This thing is definitely not going to bust my power system. However, my hydrogen might run out. So I might need to put some speed upgrades in the hydrogen maker thing. Yes. I'm assuming this thing also doesn't use up too much power. Oh, actually that uses quite a bit. But that's fine. Not a problem. Yep, now we're producing plenty. So we're producing ethylene. So I want to produce a bunch of ethylene. Because I am... I, you know, I want to have a nice store so that I don't have to reset any of this stuff up. So let's see if we can pump out to a reinforced drum. Um, hmm. Can I not connect to these? Guess not. Alright, that's fine. I guess I'll just use an extra utilities thing. Fluid. Wait, 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 wait. Is ethylene a fluid? I think it's a gas. Uh-oh. Okay, let's just try to transport to a basic fluid tank. Then I get a f uh, fluid tank isn't a gas tank. Ah! Damn you. Here, keep processing. Well, let me try this. This is from Mechanism, so it's got a good chance of working, but again, I don't think ethylene's a fluid, so it probably won't. No. Let me guess, a gas tank is a separate thing? It is. Okay. Let's try this. This should connect. Uh. I guess it's connected? Oh, the gas tanks themselves also have side configs. Okay. Well, this is... Blue? But that one's blue too. Wait a minute. I just realized. I just made ethylene? Oh, you make substrate and ethylene at the same time. That just dawned on me. I didn't realize that. Well, that makes this a little bit simpler. Oh, cool. I can just put all the biofuel in this thing then. Okay. Anyway, let's try to get this out. So ethylene is a gas. Oh, I can set it to auto-eject, so I guess I'll just do that. That should work. Now this thing needs to input. This thing... Only deal deals in gas? It can deal in items, too? I wonder what the heck that's for. So from basically every side, it's set to take in. Right? I don't know what this transporter thing is. I don't think it's relevant. I think it's the side is the only one that matters. Yeah, green is input. So why is this not working? Okay, fine. I'll just do it manually. So, left side. Blue. Ah, there we go. I wonder what these are for. Plus and minus. Yeah, sucked it all out. Okay. Well, I'm going to process the rest of this. Got as much substrate as I can out of that thing. Now, let's take this. I'm assuming the gas tank holds what it had in it before. Yes, good. That'd be silly if it didn't. So, let's put it into the condensator. Condensator, that is correct. To turn it into liquid ethylene. Is that the right one? Some machines have side configs and some don't. Apparently that's not the one. No, that's definitely not the one. Oh, I didn't config this thing to output. It was on the right side, it just... This wasn't set to output. That's a problem.
There we go. Holy crap, that's fast. That is so fast. Of course, I put a bunch of speed upgrades in it. Like, seven of them. Oh, wait. Seven speed upgrades makes this thing 128 times faster. My god. 1.5 thousand RF per tick. Damn. That's amazing. Okay, so liquid ethylene. Now that we can put inside of a drum. But it still doesn't go in, because mechanism, I guess, only likes mechanism stuff. Fine. I use a fluid tank. Two fluid tanks. Okay, got all that liquid ethylene pumped out into these two tanks. So now we need to switch out the fluids in the pressurized reaction chamber. Instead of hydrogen and water, we need oxygen and liquid ethylene. So, how do we get this out? Well, I've heard you can use the gauge dropper for mechanism to just suck it out. Ah. Oh, you can shift left click to get rid of all of it. Okay. I looked it up on the wiki, I thought there must be a better way, and there is. Okay, now it's clear of stuff, so this is the oxygen line, let's get that over here. Oh, it probably matters which one is which. So we want the red one to be oxygen, the one on the right. So that's the one on the right already, so I'll just hook it up here. There we go. This thing should be making more. It is. I took all those speed upgrades out of the electrolyte separator, or electrolytic separator rather, so that's why it's kind of slow. But it should be fine. Okay, now let's get this stuff out. Um, right, this is a fluid now, so let's move these closer. Because I'm going to be using the transfer node from extra utilities. I want to be as close as possible so it's faster. So we want left side to be yellow. I'm just going to turn off the bottom. Oh. Gases. No, wait. No. Fluid. There we go. Okay. Well, I think we're pretty much there. Throw in the substrate and it should do the thing. It does not do the thing. Wait, what? Okay, here's what I just did. I just shut down the server and restarted it to see if that would fix it. It didn't. And then I just took out the speed upgrades. I don't know why. I just tried taking them out, and now it started working. Are you telling me this thing will not process? Are you telling me I sped it up so much that it just stopped working? Like, what? Let me put these back in and just see if it stops working. Faster? Oh my god. What? You can only have one speed upgrade or it just doesn't work? That doesn't... How does that make any sense? What the hell? Oh, wait a minute. I think I know what's going on. This thing has a very small buffer, 800 RF. If you put in another speed upgrade, more than one, then the amount of RF it needs per tick is larger than the buffer, which is why it can't run. Is that intended though, or is that a bug? I mean, that doesn't make much sense. Unless there's a capacity upgrade, that makes no sense at all. Why would it support the speed upgrades if it wouldn't work? Let's take a look. Maybe there is a capacity upgrade. Increases energy efficiency and capacity of machinery. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean... Yeah, I've, I've used that before, obviously. The energy efficiency for the digital miner. So increasing the efficiency would also work, but also just increasing the capacity would work as well. Interesting, that's the first time I've encountered that. It totally makes sense. Just at, fir at first blush, it looks like a bug. There really should be some sort of a feedback that would, you know, some indication like warning, blah, 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 does not, buffer's not big enough. Or something like that. But it's actually kind of cool. Never seen that before. Okay, well, now I've got a friggin' crap ton of HDPE pellets. This is more than enough for what I need. 
Okay, just out of curiosity, one of the things I need to make to make the item conduits is pulsating iron. I don't have that much left, so I should make some more. I can make it in the alloy smelter with iron and ender pearl. That's not the interesting part. The interesting part is, remember a long time ago when I was in the nether, going through fortresses, I think? I came across some of these weird capacitors from Ender.io. Unique ones that you can't craft, you can only find them in chests. I'm gonna try putting that in here and see what it does. Like, how much faster is it gonna make it? Is that equivalent or better than an octatic capacitor? Seems to have made it three times the original storage capacity. Let's see how fast it is. Eh, okay. I mean, it's definitely quite a bit faster. But I'd, I'd guess that that's probably on par with an octatic. Doesn't seem like it's something super, super amazing, but it's good. Okay. Well, there's a pulsating iron. And with all these HDPE pellets, I've got pretty much everything I need to make the binder composite. Except I do need to go hunting for some more coal. I'm pretty much completely out of coal, so I've got to grab some and grind it up to make coal dust. Well, I think I'm going to end this episode here. So I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return in the next episode, we are going to be in a very good position to just get right into overhauling our storage system.